Hello guys, welcome to Celia's Playlists. I'm Celia and I am here today with Ro, who is a pop punk act from Indiana. I'm excited for this one. How are you doing today, Ro? I'm doing good. Good, I'm glad. I, I, I hope that it is nicer weather out in Indiana than it is here in New York today. Uh, I mean, it's sunny, but it's also windy and still like 30 degrees, so. Oh, it was it was like overcast rainy here today. So I will I will trade you if you want. <laughs> I mean, we, we we got it last night, so I gotcha, I gotcha. So Ro, uh, let's start out with uh, the question that I always start out with. Tell me a little bit about your musical history. So <clears throat> from really, I mean, the time I was born, music was kind of a big thing in my life. Uh, like I remember so many core memories from growing up related to music that it's like I can even sit here and name like the first five songs I remember ever hearing on the radio that like I really like that wasn't something that like my parents were trying to show me. Um, and from there, I mean, I had an interest in playing music. I started out on drums and then. I think when I was about 12 or 13, I really started playing the guitar. Uh, and that's how I got into like a few of my first bands. Um, uh, and I've essentially done every role in a band at this point, really. Um, but it was early December of 2022 or no January. Sorry. Uh, like I had kind of been in a funk and I woke up at like 4 PM one day, like just super like in a manic depressive episode. And I was just like, I need to buy an acoustic guitar. And I went with like 30 minutes left at like this music store to even get anything ran in, bought an acoustic guitar, came home. And I think like two hours later, I wrote, uh, what ended up becoming alive from my first EP. And like, I sent it to a few of my friends and they're like, this is really good. You should, you should like do more of this. And I was like, Oh, okay. And then like, it slowly started developing. Cause originally row was kind of going to be a lot more laid back and a lot more acoustic driven. And then I was just like, nah, uh, like I, I like too much loud music to, put out soft music and then from there it was like i wrote next mistake and then remedy and kelsey and i was like okay this is just turning into like a full-on like pop punk pop rock project and like i remember uh i ended up getting the name for the first dp from my longtime friend uh maya who's done like a bunch of photos for me in the past because i told her i was like yeah i'm gonna put out an ep and she was like well Better late than never. Because she had been urging me for years because I think I took like a three or four year break from really being involved in like the local music scene. Mm -hmm. And that entire time she'd been like, y you have all the talent to do it by yourself. So you should just do it. I was like, nah. And then I did one day and I was like, oh, okay, I, I can do this. I feel you. I feel like everyone always feels like they have like, you know, a, a barrier of some sort and it's not even like a rational barrier all the time. So like, oh, yeah. I, I know that before the, the, uh, the actual like interview started, we, we were going over a couple of different things. And one of the things that you mentioned, did I just disappear for a second? I'm back. If I did, um, <laughs> one of the things that you mentioned is that you, uh, self produced all of your music and I yeah. feel like people are always feeling like they can't start. So like, you know, what has been kind of your experience with jumping in and figuring it out as you go? So for me, at least I did have some prior experience with like producing and stuff. I had written a lot of stuff for a lot of the other bands that I had been in that I was fronting a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, as well as in high school, I had taken JEL. So I had taken career training and done audio production there. Uh, 
and so technically the first album I ever even produced and recorded, there were only like four copies of because it was just for everyone in like the group. Uh-huh. But like I essentially did most of the work for that. And I was like, okay, this isn't bad. And like occasionally I've gone back and listened to it. And I'm like, these these are actually like really good songs. Like I didn't appreciate at the time like what I was doing. But uh, I think for me it was a lot of like – I never really tried to push myself to do it. It was just kind of something where like I was still like unemployed because I had been furloughed because of the pandemic. And I think around that time I had recently started working again, but I wasn't making like a whole lot of money. And so I was like, well, I'm I'm starting to write these songs and I want to put them out. And I don't have enough money to get into like a proper studio, but I have enough stuff here that I could reasonably start doing it. And I think it was a thing where I let myself naturally come to the conclusion that it was what I was going to need to do rather than trying to push myself in anything. Cause I mean, Roe really kind of came just out of, having nothing else in line in terms of music. And so I think for me, a lot of it was I don't have anything else that is really kind of like an anchor. And so if I can do this, then I know that if I'm ever kind of feeling, you know, just kind of free floating in life and uh, in that sort of way, that I can at least look at that and be like, okay, well, this is something that I did that. It's like, there is no one else on the credits. And that's usually what surprises a lot of people is that it's like, I'm the only person on the credits and that's kind of just the way it is. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not weird to me. It's weird to other people, but like it was more born out of necessity to get things done and like being in being as in love with music as I am it wasn't difficult for me to be like okay well this part I need to do this because I've heard it in like 20 or 30 other songs and so like if it works for them them, then it's gonna work for me as well I gotcha I gotcha I want to comment on your your production because your stuff sounds so clean like, it sounds very clean, very well mixed, very, like, you know, I I didn't even, like, I, I didn't question anything. Like, I didn't question of, like, you know, oh, did someone else do this? Or, oh, like, you know, did this guy, like, you, some people go to, like, an actual, like, you know, recording studio to try and achieve what you've been able to achieve to your, with your, like, your, your music yourself. So, I guess my question for you is, like, you know, how how have you been, like, approaching the mix and master process because i know that's one of the biggest barriers that people have because like they might be able to get it into a DAW, but they don't know what to do next so how did you uh approach learning that part of it so for that i mean part of it was the music production course that i took and then i did some college stuff relating to that as well and personally for me i was like i i kind of walked away from it being like all right, I have all the stuff that like I need to do this, but I still don't know how to do it. Like you, you, you didn't teach me anything. You were just like the, the most I remember from like my college time was uh, one of my teachers told me they were like, always compress a snare to like 60 B never any more, never any less. And I'm like, that, that can't be a rule because that would be limiting the use of this. So I'm like, it, that can't be the rule. And then like, I spent a lot of my own money from money that I had made working jobs, like buying other courses uh, from other mix engineers or producers to like try to learn. And like, I think one of the biggest ones was from uh, this guy who his name is Jordan Valeria. Uh, He has a great YouTube channel that teaches you how to mix and he runs down a lot of different things. And like, I loved that course because it wasn't just like, oh, here's some unknown song. Now mix it. It was Mm -hmm. specifically like 
two Silverstein songs that like he had mixed and produced for the records. And he was just like, yeah, here are the multi tracks and I'm going to walk you through every move I made on this mix and why I made it. And you can copy it wholesale. You know, it's like, I'm giving you my mix template and everything like that. And it's like, that's where it started from. And like, even now, the mix template I use is just a heavily modified version of like his mix template. That's kind of cool because I feel like a lot of people are very like, I'm going like, that's the opposite of gatekeeping. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of saying. So like he said, he, he really is like, all right, like, you know, you could do this and you could get a decent product, but this is also something that you can take and you can change into your own style. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's what I did. Like a lot of the things that I added to it were, uh, at least at the time in a way uh, they were added to make up for what I couldn't do. So like, I realized very early on, I was like, I'm loving the guitar tones. I'm getting out of, you know, all these programs and through mixing, but like it doesn't sound full enough. And so I was just like, oh, well, I like metal music and I know it isn't really common in rock, but I'll just add another stereo pair of rhythm guitars. And I was like, okay, I guess my sound is, you know, four guitar tracks all playing at once just in the rhythm section. It's like, well, no one, no one's complaining about it. And it's like, I learned well, that I like from, <laughs> yeah, it's like, and it's like, I realized that a lot of the stuff I do that I think that sets me apart from other people who are making music similar to me is that like a lot of what I learned was always in the context of mixing heavier music and metal music a lot of the times. And so it's this weird kind of thing where I'm just taking that production style and then just kind of putting it over what could arguably be described as pop music. And it's like, people are like, wow, this is really good. And I'm like, yeah, it's because I just make sure everything sounds like it's, it's just exploding all the time. I it's mean, like, that's what I, I like want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that it's working really well for you. And I think that it also uh, probably sets you apart on the internet because a lot yeah. of people aren't producing their, their, their music for that kind of outgoing kind of scene that is happening on social media right now. And I know that I mentioned this earlier. Uh, I, I, I watch your TikToks. Your TikToks bring me a lot of joy. Um, I open it up and I'm like, oh, I will watch this one um, because I follow a lot of accounts and don't have the opportunity to see everyone, but you come up on my for you page. So thank you for the entertainment. But I wanted to kind of get into that um, because uh, we're in a landscape where artists are kind of being forced to be content creators. And, you know, not everyone has the budget to hire a PR company. And like, I know that you probably had to jump into it and figure it out yourself. So how has been how has the journey been like, you know, getting into the online landscape that exists right now? So at least when it comes to TikTok, that was something that I had to learn a lot because uh, I was even kind of late in terms of downloading TikTok. Like, I think I downloaded it maybe summer of 2020, like. I, I was kind of behind on that. I didn't want to download it for a long time, but I also wasn't doing anything at that point. Um, and I mean, truth be told, I've tried a lot of other avenues of content creation before. I've had plenty of YouTube channels. I've streamed on Twitch before, partly why I have at least all of this equipment to do things. And I, I think with TikTok specifically, that was probably the hardest learning curve I ever had because like I very quickly realized when I was still making like call of duty videos, like how to very easily clickbait people and getting them to watch the video by just, if, even if the video wasn't negative, just by being like, if I make a negative enough title, people are just going to click on it. Like, and that that's it. it. The video will do great just based on that. Mm -hmm. But with TikTok, it was a lot harder and like, I remember I had a few friends that had videos that did really well. Uh, I had a close friend of mine who 
did actually have like a fairly viral video with a few million views that was centered around like the KFC game console that they were releasing forever ago. And then like after that, they were just like, yeah. And then it's just all gone. Like all, all of this interaction. And the next time nothing. Yep. And it's like, to me, it, it was a lot of those situations where I learned that I was like, okay, so if you have a video that does well, it really needs to focus at least on the broader idea of the topic that your account is focusing on. I've seen plenty of posts over the internet of being like, I had a video go viral and my song was in it and it didn't do anything to my monthly listeners. And people are like, all right, well, what was the video? And it was like some in game video and the song was in the background. And it's like, well, yeah, because what you were doing in game was more attractive than the song. And so I just realized that like, if I could even just like find trends that are happening on TikTok and find some way to spin it, to be related to music, that was better than like not posting at all or posting something completely different just for the sake of posting. I don't, I, I really like scour TikTok. Like I'm probably on it only one or two hours a day, but most of that time is either making content or uploading the content or going through like my for you page and trying to find either sounds or other video ideas that it's like, okay, I could easily do this in my own way. Cause like, I don't, I don't come up with a lot of the ideas for like more of the skit TikToks I do. It's just like, I saw someone essentially do the same thing. I'm going to change these four or five things about it to make it not a straight copy and no one ever knows to you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think that's one of the best ways to go about it because people like the, the pushback that I always get from people are, Oh, I don't want to do trends. I don't want to do this. I don't want, I don't like want to have to like put work in essentially. And if you are going to be on that platform um, and this is kind of echoed with everything, the same content doesn't work on all the platforms. And TikTok is a very specific platform because if you're not keeping up with what's going on on TikTok or if you take a week off of there, like, you know, the trends change, everything changes. And also, if you notice, if you talk to different people, they get different things on their For You page. So like for what I'm getting, I get a lot of like music, a lot of astrology and spiritual stuff, a lot of like educational content. But you talk to the next person and they get like someone doing backflips on like, I don't know, like this substance that if you stand on it too long they sink into it like you know like that's it's such a different landscape than any other app because like it's not a like instagram where you go on there and it like is mostly the people you follow it could be whatever yeah like you know keeping on top of the whatever um you know there might be a trending audio that's going on right now like um at the time of this, like, we're not too far off from the one that is like, uh, all this work and what does it get me? Like that is like a trend that you can apply to everything. Yeah. It's like, um, I actually, mm -hmm. that was like my TikTok like two or three days ago. I think it was three days ago because I just showed Brie that one. It was like, and like, that was uh, essentially like me doing the same thing of like, I, I essentially took that idea from another person who was essentially going through the same problem. And it's like, yeah, because that's the reality of most TikTok accounts is that like, yeah, they're only going to get anywhere between two to 300 views. It's like, I was surprised where over like the last two days, like both of my last videos have gotten like over 700 views. And I'm like, I've never had a lip sync video, like go past three or four. So like, mm-hmm. that's already like, I was like, something was weird. And then I later learned that was because UMG had also started taking down more yes. songs related to working with people who were signed to umg even if you were an independent artist and so i was like oh okay that makes more sense as to why there there was less uh other video content for me to have to wade through to get to the people who i know would actually enjoy it i like that you bring up the umg thing because that was a big deal and it's still a big deal because it allows more uh freedom for independent artists and for you as someone that has the only credit on your song and you are putting it out and yourself putting it out, it actually makes it a very useful platform for you right now. Oh, yeah. Like, I 
have tried taking as much advantage as I can when it comes to that. Um, I, I've noticed that from either people who like or follow or even just view the video, uh, the conversion from them going from TikTok to listening to a song, whether it be, you know, the most recent song or just even next mistake is that's always the first one up there. Like it's one of those things where it's like, I have noticed there's been a significant increase in that as opposed to uh, before UMG took everything down. And it's like, to me, it's like, yeah, I obviously feel bad for the artists on UMG because, I mean, I'm a fan of Def Leppard, so I've known UMG has not necessarily been the greatest uh, group to necessarily sign to for a number of years. But, like, I think that a lot more artists are at least going to get their foot in the door of being able to be heard and grow a little bit more now that for at least the time being there's not these massive campaigns that are happening on TikTok anymore it's all people who you know are able to throw a few hundred bucks a year into advertising and that's it and it's like I think that's great because I've stopped hearing a lot of artists that all sound the same and I'm hearing more artists that are doing weirder things and being unhinged in their music. And I'm like, yes, I I love this. This is what I want. Like Mm -hmm. as much as I love like the Phoebe Bridgers, Julian Baker and boy genius, like sound, it's like there was a point two months ago where I was scrolling through TikTok and it was like, that was the only music content I was getting where artists that sound like that. And I'm like, I, it, this sound eventually is not going to be popular anymore. And it's like, then what, what are you going to do? Because it's like, you've really banked on this being what does it. Yeah. And it's like, but I also know that like the weirder artists are the ones that always end up having longer career trajectories over that pe- same period of time. That's a really great point, which actually leads me to like my question that I ask everyone in these interviews my question that I ask everyone is if someone was going to start in music and you could take this however you want now, what would be your advice to them and in whatever way you would like to take that? Um, I mean, I would say however scared or anxious you are just kind of do it because I, I mean, as a person who has dealt with a lot of anxiety uh, over my life, Uh, even including to the point where like I weirdly know that I have a harder time playing like small shows to 10 or 20 people than I do if like it's a bigger crowd and I can't see anyone's face like I'm like I feel more comfortable there than I do in a small intimate venue but like I was very scared to release anything and I mean even do anything because I had a lot of anxiety built up around it. I had a lot of fear that people wouldn't like it. And I think uh, that kind of all went away when I just kind of started doing it. And people are like, I, I, I love this. You know, it's like, to me, it was a bigger compliment that like my peers in the local music scene were really early adopters of it rather than even just like people who come out to shows. Cause since I haven't played new shows, it's like, they may not have heard my music, but like all of my peers who like I've even looked up to are just like that. Like how, like how, how, how are you doing this? Because it's like, it's insane. And I'm just like, I don't know. I, I can't explain how I do anything. It just kind of happens. I get an idea and 30, 45 minutes later, I, have a song that a lot of people think is really good. I'm just like, all right, you know? And so I think a big thing is really just doing it. Uh, You know, like I also stopped myself from making TikToks for a long time. And then I just started deciding to do it and take it a lot more seriously than I did. And it was this thing of where I kind of 
rationalized it by like, all right, well, when I upload it, I don't have to watch it. Yes. Like, I, I don't have to watch it. I can go and watch other people's TikToks and that's fine. And like, it was kind of this thing of where I realized I didn't have to be subjected to seeing myself do things that maybe out of the context of content creating, I would never do. Like, personally, you'll never see me really dance in a TikTok because I can't dance. So it's like, I'm not going to do that. But like, I mimic how I would play live when I do lip sync videos, you know? And so it's like, a lot of it is just kind of doing it because I found that if you just kind of make yourself do it, it just becomes normal after a while. Like I essentially wake up every day, take a shower, get ready. And then I'm like, all right, what am I going to do for a TikTok today? And then I make the TikTok, upload it, let it do its thing. And then I'm like, all right, that's that done for the day. Like, I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think a lot of the time it's just kind of trying to plan what you are comfortable with. And then once you are fully comfortable with kind of doing it, start to kind of push your own boundaries a little bit and be like, well, I did this so I could also do something like this mm -hmm. and just kind of let yourself become used to doing it on a regular basis and becoming more comfortable with it. And then when you kind of know when you've gotten into a groove because you will either get consistent results or consistent growth, you know, and both are great either way you look at it. And so it's like, I realized that like maybe over the past month, like for me personally, I'm like, yeah, it took me like three or four months of really doing it with showing myself to be like, oh, okay, this is what I need to do. I feel you. I feel you. And I think that's all very, very good advice. Um, like, you know, a lot of people are, are nervous to, to start. And I think that all of those things are very real, very valuable things for people to keep in mind. So thank yeah, you for Yeah, I mean, I, I even do it still. Like, I have a song where I know that right now the only thing I need to record in terms of main vocals is just the bridge. And I, like, I know that I need to do that. And I'm just like, yeah, but I can put it off for a little bit. Like, and I'm like, but, but I, I need, I need to do it. Like I need to do it so that I can fill in the little square on my whiteboard where I mark all my progress and be like, all right, now I only have two songs for a release. I want to do by this summer. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I, I do, I still do put like a lot of stuff off. And so it's like, I, I can give the advice, but also I need to learn to take my own advice better. This is true. And I'm in the same boat. So I've been, I've been working on my own systems towards that. And I actually got an assistant and Brie, if you see this, I love you. <laughs> um, but uh, where can everyone find you? Because I feel like that's a, an important thing. And um, yeah, uh, I know we talked about TikTok, but you know, how, how do they find your music? So it will just be under row on uh, places like Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, I know there are quite a few rows since it is a whole thing. But uh, just a reminder that at least mine is technically a family name. So mine is a little more truthful, at least to that. Um, but I mean, yeah, if you it, it's just really under row, usually all caps uh, is the way I've stylized it. Um, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, essentially everywhere where music can be uploaded. It's probably up there. I, I try to make sure I check all stores when I'm uploading my music so that people don't have any trouble finding it. Um, I know I think at least you might be able to find, I think, at least Life of the Party on like the Touch Tunes type thing. I think I paid for that because I know... I was also getting Shazams for that one too. So like <laughs> it's in, it's in some database, but uh, yeah, Ro, if you just see a guy with long hair, you, you've, you found the right artist. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for like hanging out with me today, Ro. I like, you know, I, I've been watching your content and I'm like, this dude, this dude would be a cool dude. So I, I was so happy when I saw your name pop up today on my like roster and um, I, I want to thank you for hanging and sharing your story. Yeah, thank you.
Of course, of course. So to everyone who's tuning in, make sure you're following Ro and, uh, you know, follow Ro on Ro's journey. And I hope you guys have an awesome night. I'll see you on the next interview.